our seats in the front row, Senator Little. Come on down. <laughs> it's always a first. You can sit next to Wendy. Well, good morning, and welcome to the Farmington State of the City address. My name is Maureen scallon Failer, and I'm president of the Dakota County Regional Chamber of Commerce. The Dakota County Regional Chamber of Commerce is that influ influential regional voice that champions promotion and improvement of the business environment, cultivating vibrant regional and local communities. It really is great to have you here today. And for those of you new to Dakota County Regional Chamber, welcome. And for our long standing members, thank you for your continued support and investment. First, let me thank uh, the City of Farmington for co-hosting co uh, today's program and providing the refreshments. Thank you. We deeply uh, appreciate and value our partnership with the City of Farmington. I also would like to take time to uh, acknowledge our public officials who are here with us this morning. So when I call your name, if you could please uh, stand so we can properly uh, recognize you. I want to start off with some of our city council members here in uh, Farmington, Joshua Hoyt and Terry Donnelly. Can you please stand? Yeah. I know. Oh, there. Okay. Oh, you are standing. That's nice of you to give up seats. <laughs> Um, we also have uh, Wendy Wolf from the Metropolitan Council. Wendy. Uh, Commissioner Mike Slavic, who uh, represents this area. Thank you, Commissioner, for coming. And uh, Senator Matt Little. Thank you so much, Senator. I know you're off today, but you go back at it tomorrow. Lots of important things happening. Thank you for your service. And to all of our public officials, thank you for everything you do to represent Dakota County and the city of Farmington. Our key initiatives uh, at the chamber are transit, transportation, workforce development, retaining and attracting talent, and economic development and housing. And by working on these initiatives, we are committed to ensure that the city of Farmington and along with Dakota County succeed. In February, the chamber held its annual meeting and our theme was better together. And when we come together to work collaboratively, we do better as a city, a community, county, and the state. It is now my extreme pleasure to introduce U.S. Representative Angie Craig. Um, Representative Craig was elected uh, to her first term uh, no, uh, November 2018. And most recently, she was appointed to the Small Business uh, com uh, Committee. So Angie, if you, Representative Angie Craig, come on up and thank you so much. And Angie will be introducing our uh, speakers today. It is always a real risk when you ask an elected official to come speak for two minutes, because that rarely ever happens. But I just wanted to say thank you for having me here today. It's an honor to serve this congressional district, and especially to serve an area like Farmington, which has uh, really shepherded tremendous growth uh, through Dakota County. Mike, it's been an honor to work with you as well. Um, I know you're working on some uh, great initiatives in Dakota County. And then uh, Mayor slash senator slash friend Matt Little. It is great to see you. And I'm not even going to bust your chops today in front of everybody. So I know I'm going to leave that to you, Mayor. Um, but it is great. And my best wishes to you and Coco in the birth of your first child. So thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here. I am representing Minnesota's 2nd Congressional District, and my main priorities are the priorities of my committee. So I've been working with Dakota County because I'm part of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee to make sure that uh, we are including uh, your priorities in a transportation package that I am still optimistic and hopeful uh, will actually pass the U.S. House and become law. And I know that some days it doesn't feel like we should be very hopeful. Uh, some days in Washington, 
often I ask myself, uh, should I still be optimistic and hopeful? But this is one area where I truly believe uh, that we can work together on. And I know the president and the administration wants an infrastructure package. We are willing to work with him. And I do hope I'm able to bring home some resources for Dakota County. The second thing I'd just like to say is I'm also part of the um, Ag Committee of the U.S. House, and this is a very special interest to me. Uh, my grandfather was a farmer. I spent over uh, 20 years working in export sales at St. Jude Medical. Uh, over half of our revenue came from outside the United States. I understand how important access to these markets are for the nation's farmers, and I'm committing, committed to making sure that we are working to open these markets uh, to the farmers of this country, and I know it's a tough time for the nation's farmers, uh, just like it was in the 1980s when my own grandfather lost his job and ultimately his farm. And then finally, I have been appointed. I'm one of uh, only a few members, freshman members of Congress, to be appointed to the House Committee on Small Business. Uh, I worked in the private sector for over 25 years. I still believe in this country that there's more that unites us than divides us. And as a member of Congress, I promise to stay off Twitter. Uh, I promise to stay out of the most uh, controversy in the U.S. Congress. And I promise to work on behalf of our communities because I believe we need more members of Congress who are less concerned about their own party and politics than they are about the people that they represent. So with that, thank you very, very much for having me today. Now, I almost stayed within two minutes, so that was really extraordinary. Um, I, I, I wanted to say how proud I am to be part of the second district and to represent an area like Farmington. Uh, you have been able to shepherd your growth, uh, to be able to uh, uh, have economic development and unemployment that exceeds the national um, uh, average, that uh, does better than the national average. And you are doing all that and balancing the commercial growth, um, keeping your own culture intact here in Farmington, and it's really, really, really extraordinary. So with that, it is my absolute honor this morning to be able to introduce Mayor Todd Larson. Mayor Larson and I have been able to uh, meet a few times now and talk about the needs of our communities. Uh, one of the issues that I think uh, uh, the mayor has been concerned about uh, is a small tel uh, cell towers issue, and I wanted to let you know that I have now co-sponsored that bill that would make sure that local control remains uh, with these cell towers. So uh, with that, I wanted to say thank you, and then City Administrator David McKnight, I also wanted to acknowledge the work uh, that you do to keep this place running. So with that, uh, Mayor Lawson and City Administrator McKnight, Thank you so much for having me this morning. Thank you. Two minutes, huh? <laughs> Congress time. I get it. I get it. I get it. You get all these papers here straightened out here. Just take me a minute. Um, when they first gave me this um, speech for my review, I needed like binoculars to see it. Look at the font size now. <laughs> I'm 54 years old, I need that. So anyway, um, thank you for coming everybody, I appreciate it. I'm Mayor Todd Larson, I wanna welcome everyone to Farmington State of the City Address. I am almost a lifelong resident of Farmington, almost. I moved here when I was 10. The script said that I was lifelong, almost, almost. So I've been mayor since 2009 and my term expires December 31st. 2020. So the makeup of Farmington goes far beyond just the city hall walls. I need a page turner. It's our schools. And our schools are represented here, where Jay Hagen was named superintendent of the year. So congratulations on that. <laughs> We're very proud of him and everything he does to keep to make the schools and the city the very best that they can be. So thank you very much for all your efforts. Uh, it's our, our, our library isn't only a place to check out books. Uh, they have programs for kids and adults and craft, um, craft classes and book clubs. Uh, our library is an awesome, awesome place to visit. And, and it's kind of funny because, um, especially on the campaign trail, you're all 
And I'm straying from, I'm sorry, Cindy, but th this is what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. So you're on a campaigning trail and you're talking to people, you know, and, and, and you get questions like, what, we have a library? Where? Yes, we have a library. It's just right over there by City Hall. So yes, go visit the library if you get a chance. It's a great place. Uh, the fairgrounds is home to the Dakota County Fair every August where thousands of people come to see the 4-H exhibits, uh, performances, enjoy the food and the carnival rides. Uh, it's a great family place offering tours of Dakota City Heritage Village. Uh, and they also have a campground in the summer. Um, Almost every single weekend, there is some type of family activity going on at the fairgrounds, and I'd encourage you, everyone, to uh, go to their website and check out their calendar. It's a lot of fun. I live pretty close to the fairgrounds, so I hear it all the time. It's so much fun. It is. It is. So the Rambling River Center is a gathering place for seniors to socialize and spend time together. And many people take advantage of the rental opportunities at the Rambling River Center uh, to host uh, gradu graduation parties, family reunions, and all kinds of social activities. In the ice arena, there we go. And the ice arena is home to tiger hockey games and skating events. Uh, and throughout the all throughout the year. Uh, and as you can see here, when the ice comes out, the turf goes in. That's relatively new. We, turf goes in for lacrosse and soccer and other games and practices. So that building gets utilized all year, all year round. Uh, that was one of our goals uh, as a city council. Uh, the Community Expo in January allows for Farmington businesses to show residents that they have, what they have to offer. Uh, last year there were 124 vendors and over 2,000 people that attended uh, the expo. Uh, this is also an excellent way for the city to interact with residents and on current projects and offerings that we have. Farmington is music and movies in the park, along with the puppet wagon in the summer. Um, it's residents volunteer for pond and park cleanup. And I would like to thank all the volunteers that help make Farmington a clean and healthy place to live. They do a fantastic job every spring. It's our students learning about Arbor Day and Pollution Prevention Day and how important trees are to our community and how to take care of those trees. Uh, and, and the Pollution Prevention Day teaches every fourth grader in the city uh, how they can prevent sediment and waste going into our lakes and rivers and streams and ponds. It's a great program. It's our residents enjoying 913 acres of parks and trails. sticky pages here. Uh, Farmington residents enjoy an active lifestyle and, and to fulfill that need, we have neighborhood parks, open spaces, and 48 miles of trails throughout the city. Uh, and we're always trying to keep our parks fresh and new so our residents can enjoy the experience. And uh, our trails, our trails always rate really, really high on any community survey that we send out. So we do our best to keep them up. Uh, Farmington is the Farmington food shelf helping those in need. And they're always looking for donations and volunteers. So if you have some extra time, please volunteer. It's our firefighters and police officers responding to emergencies and spending time with residents. Uh, these guys and gals are such an asset to Farmington. Our police officers, officers do a great job of community policing here in Farmington. And they're extremely friendly most of the time. Not all the time. Sometimes they have to put their mean face on, right? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and our firefighters always go above and beyond. Where's Justin? Thank, thank you, the firefighters, for this. Inside and outside the community, they're always doing something for somebody, uh, whether it's raising money for, uh, what was the stair climber? What was that event? Man, that's the recent one. I put them on the spot here, and he's really mad at me right now, I bet. So anyway, they're always out raising money and, and, and just being out in, in the public and being good examples. So I want to thank firefighters and the police officers. Thank them for me for, for being such good examples. And speaking of public safety, yeah, there we go. And speaking of public safety, uh, for the second year in a row, is it only two years in a row? That we've done? Okay, it seems more than that, but we'll take it. Uh, Farmington's ranked in the top 20 of uh, safest cities. Um, this year we're at 17. I had to wait for the next slide because I have on here. Uh, wow, look at the new plow trucks. We have new plow trucks. We haven't had new plow trucks in years. It, it was so bad that one of our plow trucks, we just had to put off to the side. It, it couldn't be driven. But we actually made a plan and, and stuck to it. And we have 
uh, new plow trucks. So uh, Farmington's our, Farmington is our snow plow drivers, go on out early in the morning and, and late at night to plow roads. And our street department has called, been called on these past few years uh, to work extremely hard, extremely long days and extremely long nights. Uh, they're like the energi Energizer buddy, Bunny. They, they just keep going and going and going and more power to them. And Mother Nature just hasn't given them much of a break uh, these past couple of years. Uh, it's our solid waste drivers providing weekly garbage service. Uh, they help our city stay clean. Again, these drivers always go above and beyond. So thank you uh, to them. Next slide. Oh, a new sweeper too. A new sweeper too. Who thought? Who would have thought? Uh, so it's our street and utility workers maintaining streets and making sure the water stays on and turns on. It's our community celebration, due days, dazzle days, and national, um, national night out. And the due days has a committee. Uh, it, it's created by CEIF, which is a Castle Rock Empire Eureka Farmington en Enhancement Group. Uh, easy for anyone to say, right? So, and, and under that, under Steve is the due days committee, and they put the due days on every year in, uh, in June, do a fantastic job. Dazzle Days is run by our uh, Farmington Business Association. Incredible job we do with, uh, they do with that. And National Night Out is National Night Out. Everyone knows National Night Out. So all these things together uh, make Farmington a great place to live, work, and play. And now, I get to introduce David to go in depth on the priorities of the city council. So this is David Knight, fresh off of vacation. <laughs> Looks like he had a fantastic time. Yeah, so it was two weeks ago I last practiced this speech, so bear with me. Uh, thank you, Mayor Larson. As Todd said, my name is David McKnight. I am a lifelong resident of Farmington. I was born here 50 years ago at Sanford Hospital. Um, I've served as a city administrator since 2011. As a city administrator, I report directly to the city council, which enables me to have my hand in a little bit of everything that we do here in Farmington. So it's, a, it's an entertaining job on most days. Today I'm going to share with you some information on the priority set by the City Council for this year, I'll talk about some items of interest by our department, talk about 2009 projects, all of which are meant to make Farmington a better place for all of us. Uh, 2018 was an election year in Farmington like everywhere else. Um, after being appointed to a vacant seat in 2016, City Council Member Katie Burnjohn was elected to a four-year term in the November election. In addition, Council Member Joshua Hoyt was elected to a four-year term, winning as a write-in candidate. Also serving on the City Council are Council Members Terry Donnelly and Robin Craig, whose terms run through December of next year. Each year, the City Council holds a priority setting session with department heads. We held that this year in February, where the City Council set four general priorities. These priorities are intentionally set at the 20,000-foot level. The priorities this year include continuing our sound financial practices, development of a successful development for a successful future, building on established partnerships, and delivery of high quality services. And I'll start out with the continued sound financial practices. We intentionally included the word continued in there this year because this is something that we've worked on even before I started here. Now, this is the foundation for our operations for everything that we do. Focusing in this area, the City Council set some goals of getting our bond rating upgraded to AA plus by 2022, implementing the 2030 financial plan with our 2020 budget. The 2030 financial plan is a 20,000 foot look at our budget and levy for the next um, 11 years, which helps us set priorities. And then finally taking that plan into consideration when we do set those priorities and plans. I'm happy to say that as of last week, our bond rating was upgraded to AA+. <laughs> which, and I'll remind the City Council of this in my review in August that we met this goal three years early. <laughs> but this is something, as a city administrator, this is Christmas Day to me. This is something that's a result of a lot of hard work by a lot of people. And when I watched the meeting from last week that I wasn't at, our financial advisors shared that this was based on three reasons. Our growing economy in Farmington, 
very strong financial management, and our low debt burden both today and projected into the future. So I thank you for the round of applause that the city got because this is something that everyone should be proud of in Farmington. Next, priority number two is development for a successful future. I'm gonna to skip to a map here. Um, could Farmington continues to grow. Uh, the City of Council approved the final plat for the Fairhill development at their meeting on April 15th. The Fairhill development is located at the intersection of Highway 3 and 195th Street, the roundabout there near Southern Hills Golf Course. Um, this will be phase one of an eventual 1,000 acre development which will, which will add many, many more residents to Farmington. City Council also approved the Sapphire Lake final plat on April 1st. Sapphire Lake, if you look at the map, it's located just east of East Farmington. This will add an additional 130 residential units to our community. And as an update, the Vermilion River Crossings area, which is the area located by McDonald's, uh, the city council, all the lots out there have been sold. Um, the city council has approved a preliminary plat, a site plan, financial conditional use permit, and a business subsidy agreement with Hy-V. Approved a site plan and conditional use permit for Aldi and we are anxiously awaiting word on when development will start. I can tell you there's no five people more excited for development to start out there than the city council. We've done everything we've been asked to, for development to occur out there and we continue to communicate with the property owners on a monthly basis. So just as important as those larger big box developments, uh, the city council supports the expansion of the commercial industrial opportunities of all sizes. Uh, a block from here on Elm Street between third and uh, fourth streets. We recently had the Cornerstone, Cornerstone Preschool and Daycare open up as a brand new business in Farmington. We had the Farmington Gymnastics build their own building from a building that they were renting. An easy auto rebuild after a fire destroyed their facility um, about two years ago. So that redevelopment of that block was something that we were just as excited as the future high V's and Aldi's. Priority number three is building on established partnerships. Partnerships are vital in the government world, maybe even more so than the private sector because of the work that we do and the source of our funding. And when we talk about partnerships in the city of Farmington, the first thing that's mentioned is always our partnership with Independent School District 192. They're our primary partners in this community. And we work both at the elected and appointed levels to improve these relationships on a daily basis. I was in a meeting in the last month with the superintendent, school board chair, and vice chair, along with two city council members and myself, talking about issues that are relevant to both of our organizations and our community. So this is something that we work on on a monthly basis. The city council fully supports the work of our business partners at the Dakota County Regional Chamber of Commerce and the Farmington Business Association. These are two business groups with different missions that do great things for our community, and we're very supportive of the work that they do. I went ahead too early there, Cindy. No, no, I didn't. We'll continue to participate in discussions with Dakota County on regional issues, including transportation, service delivery, CDA housing and economic development issues, and more. County Commissioner Mike Slavik is a regular attendee at city council meetings and at city functions, and we thank the commissioner for support of our community. Finally, we'll work with Empire, Castle Rock, and Eureka Townships as good neighbors do. We have recently spent the most time with Empire Township where we were able to piggyback with them on some projects coming to Highway 3 in 2020, which will involve the installation of four turn lanes on the highway in the Empire and Farmington area and the construction of a roundabout in 170th Street. We all have also had detailed discussions with Empire Townships on both of our 2040 comp plan developments and with our new city water tower that will be built in the 2021 timeframe. So this is a perfect example that shows how partnerships work and how, bring, how we bring efficiency to our projects by working with our neighbors. Our partnerships between governments are well established in Dakota County, Dakota County and also extend to the state and federal levels. We receive support from Senator Little, Representative Garofalo and US Representative Craig amongst others, all of which have been invited to our joint city council school board work session, which is tentatively scheduled for Monday, July 15th here in this room. The final priority set by the, by the City Council for 2019 is the delivery of high quality service. This is typically on their goals, but the work underneath it changes each year. This year, one of the things that we've been asked to look at is reviewing options for solid waste delivery. 
Farmington is what's called an organized collection city. That means we have one person that collects solid waste in the city. We're very unique in that we as a city are that collector. We've discussed this issue a number of times over the last year or two because of two primary reasons. Uh, the regulations on where we can dispose of solid waste in Farmington have become more complex each year. So that's issue one that creates this topic of discussion. The second is that of cost. The cost to get rid of the garbage that we produce in our homes and businesses continues to go, quite frankly, through the roof each year. So it's something that we have to look at. Just wanted to go through a number of items of interest by department. We've talked about my department a little bit. Our human resources department, we're happy to say that we have our new human resources director, Jennifer Gabbard, on board. She started with us on March 27th and she came to us from the city of Shakopee where she held a similar position. She's here today, so let's welcome Jennifer to Farmington. <laughs> our business like yours, is very invested in IT. There's nothing that we do that the IT department's not involved in, so we'll leave it at that for this one. It's <laughs> um, communications is very vital to our success in Farmington. We communicate with our residents in a number of different ways. I'm gonna read some off to you here. Um, we have obviously our webpage. We use our social media outlets, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Nextdoor. We send out a quarterly newsletter that actually just went out and we rebranded recently as the Farmington Currents. That's a very professional newsletter that staff did a great job on. We have our own cable channel, channel 180, and our own YouTube channel. We create city videos of, on topics of interest that we place on all of these mediums. Uh, the Rambling River Center sends out a newsletter to its members. We have a resident guide that's updated on a regular basis that's available on our, news, on our website. E-notifications, we staff a community expo booth with quite frankly dozens of employees each year. We have police and fire department open houses, national night out visits, and all of our meetings are broadcast live on our channel 180 and rebroadcast dozens of times each year, or each week. A Couple other departments are community development department. This is the department that I say deals with the growth in Farmington. Uh, they're the ones that did all the work on the subdivisions I talked about. Platts, economic development, building inspections, et cetera. They've spent the last year working on the 2040 comp plan, which, should be a, which will be approved by the city council here in the next two months. Our engineering department works on our streets, trails, water towers, fleet, et cetera. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our most valuable employees over the last six months. That's our snowplow drivers who have worked endlessly without the recognition that they should get on a daily basis. And by daily, I mean the middle of the night, weekends, holidays, et cetera. So we'll thank them for the work that they do for us 24 hours a day. Our finance department is responsible for the budget, investments, our audit, accounts receivable and account payable and more and a big reason for our bond rating upgrade we received recently. And then one of our biggest assets is our park and recreation department. They're responsible for the 24 parks, 47 miles of trails, our facilities like the Rambling River Center and Schmitz Mackey Arena, and dozens of programs offered on a monthly basis. If you have the time and have the interest, watch the March 18th city council meeting to see the annual report by Randy Distead. He will show you how this department literally touches thousands of people each year with the programs that they offer. Public safety is one of the most important services that the city provides. The city council approved the promotion of Gary Rutherford to police chief on February 5th of this year. Gary has been with the department for many years, having served as a patrol officer, sergeant, and acting police chief. And Gary is with us today. We can congratulate Gary on his new position. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, the department consists of 24 sworn officers, including our most popular officer and employee, our K-9 Odin, who's pictured on the screen there. You can find out more about the department and what they do, see the equipment that they use, et cetera, at their police department open house, which is scheduled for Saturday, May 18th. Our other half of our public safety <coughs> providers is our Farmington Fire Department. Our department is made up, made up of one full-time chief and up to 60 paid on-call firefighters. Our fire chief Justin Elvestad will be joined by our second full-time fire department position in July of this year when we hire our first full-time deputy chief. So that's good news for the department and the community. 
And today is actually a very big day for the department because we will take ownership of engine 11, which is shown here on the screen. You can clap for that because that's been a lot of it. <laughs> This engine will be based out of Station 1. Uh, the City Council started saving for this purchase in 2014, which enabled us to purchase this engine with cash at a fully equipped cost of just over $800,000. The engine, that's, that's for you. <laughs> the engine has a 20-year life expectancy, and actually this purchase is a big deal to me. It's the final purchase in the standalone fire department capital improvement program that the city council put in place a number of years ago. They did that for a number of reasons. They wanted to increase the fleet that the fire department had, in, which was much needed, increase the quality of the equipment that the firefighters use, and also increase the relationship between the city and the fire department. And I can tell you here five years later, I think all of those things have happened. You know, in my opinion, it's the most professional and most prepared fire department we've had in our history. So kudos to you, Justin, and all of your staff. A few projects that we're working on now. Um, Farmington is a very active community and residents enjoy using our trails and natural areas. In 2018, Dakota County awarded a $32,000 grant to the city to develop a bike and pedestrian plan. This plan will address the future of citywide bicycle and pedestrian networks, building off of an existing network of sidewalks and trails. A committee consisting of community members, along with a consultant, was formed to facilitate this process. Residents were able to share their thoughts through an online survey in January, and we'll have another opportunity at an open house scheduled here this week. It's anticipated the plan will be approved by the City Council in June. And that open house is actually scheduled for Thursday, April 25th from 6 to 7.30 here at City Hall. In terms of park development, this summer the city will be completing the development of a Marigold Park located in the east central area of the city and Prairie Pines Park located in the southeast corner of Farmington. Both parks are currently undeveloped. There will be playground equipment and park shelters similar to the one you see on the screen at both parks. <coughs> Prairie Pines Park will also have paved trail connections in a full court basketball court. The Highway 3 corridor plan, which you might have read about recently, a planning effort is underway that will result in a Highway 3 corridor plan. Highway 3 is a state highway containing a mix of land uses. Residents provided comments in an online survey in November, which are on the city's website for review. The consultant for this project attended the community expo and answered questions from residents. Additional meetings will be held to gather additional public comment. The City Council EDA and Planning Commission actually held a joint work session on this two weeks ago to continue to move this process along. And the end result will be a plan with a unified vision for future redevelopment of this area of the community. We have some street reconstruction and maintenance projects scheduled for this year. In 2019, the Westview neighborhood, located near Ash Street and Denmark Avenue, will undergo a street and utility reconstruction project. This project will include pavement replacement, water main and sanitary sewer replacement. The lift station will be abandoned, stormwater will be installed, streets will be street lights will be replaced, and conduit will be installed in the right of way. The estimated cost of this project is just over $4 million. In an effort to continue maintaining our streets, mill and overlay projects will return to Farmington in 2019 with work occurring in the Troy Hills and Fair Hills neighborhood. And finally, these projects, along with our annual seal coating and crack sealing, are meant to maintain and extend the quality of life of our city streets. 2019, I would also call the year of the water project. Actually, it's one of many years of water projects that we'll have here in Farmington. Our main water tower located at Pilot Knob Road in 195th Street is a very prominent landmark in our city. As with anything, maintenance re is required both on the inside and outside of the tower. The tower turns 20 years old this year, which is a time for major reinvestment back into the tower. And while much of the publicity on this project has focused on the outside of the tower, the work that will occur on the inside of the tower is most important and help, helps provide safe drinking water to our residents. We also have our well number nine completed this year, and we're continuing the work to prepare for a new water tower construction in 2020 or 21. This is what you may have read about in the paper. This will be the new look of our water tower once it's completed this summer. This design was, had contributions from city council members, city staff, the water board, and a consultant that we hired to help us on this project. So this will be the new look you see on our water towers later this year. This was done in conjunction with our new city logo. 
The city council wanted to see a refreshed, more modern look to our logo, which you see here, and I think we've accomplished that. Not everyone likes it, that's okay. It's a personal preference thing. But this logo we will roll out in many different areas. Here's some social media icons that we can change using different pictures, colors, etc. But this logo replaced our logo, which we are guesstimated is about, was about 30 years old since its creation. So with that, I will turn it back to Mayor Larson to talk about some business growth that has occurred in our community. And I thank you for your time and your attendance today. Okay, one thing I learned from that was we, next year we need an applause light so David can control it and so he can let everyone know when they should clap and when they shouldn't clap, so. I'm sorry. So, um, logo looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, I, when we first said, let's change the logo, I'm like, hmm, I don't know if we want to do that or not, and I couldn't be happier with the logo we have, so. Lauren, thanks, nice work. So, uh, in 2018, uh, we had 17 new businesses and 11 that expanded or moved into a new location. Uh, and we already have three new businesses in the first quarter of this year. Uh, so we're excited and with that business growth that we're having. We held ribbon cuttings for many of those um, businesses. And a question we get a lot with the, uh, here at the city is, why don't we have more businesses? You got like business growth 101 here, and I'm sure you guys know this, but this is for people watching at home. So attracting a new business isn't a matter of making phone calls and asking a business to come here. It's not that easy. Uh, businesses locate uh, when and where uh, they feel they'll be profitable. Uh, to have the, you need to have the land available, which we do. Uh, certain types of businesses look for incentive programs to come here. Uh, we have those programs. Uh, some businesses will hire a site selector uh, to contact the city with specific needs uh, that the businesses require. Uh, Farmington responds to those requests along with many other cities at the same time. Uh, once the city is chosen, uh, there are no negotiations between the city and the businesses and the landowners. Uh, once those businesses have purchased property, uh, see, they set their own construction timeline. Uh, we have a lot of patience, uh, or you have a lot of patience and then the business is open. Uh, that's where we're at right now. Uh, we're having patience. I don't like having patience, but we have to have patience. Uh, waiting for Hy-Vee and Aldi and Taco Bell. Whose phone is that? <laughs> that's awesome. Every year this happens. So I was, I was really looking forward to it this year. I'm hoping it's not mine. <laughs> I think I silenced it. Uh, so, yeah, um, Hy-Vee, uh, Aldi's, and Taco Bell we're waiting on in, in the, um, oh, um, oh, by the McDonald's, which is the Vermilion River, River Crossing. You know, when you're up here, you get a mental block, and that's what I had right now. So, uh, anyway, they'll come according to their own uh, timeline. And because of the hard work of staff and residents in shopping local, uh, Farmington Liquors has grown tremendously uh, over the last few years. They've donated $1 million, $1 million back into the community in too many ways to mention since 2005. So uh, a thank you to uh, Liquor Operations Manager Blair Peterson and his staff for all the hard work that they do. And thank you to the customers that uh, choose to shop local at the Farmington Liquor Store. So thank you very much. I want to take a minute to uh, thank our residents for their, don uh, for their donations or through your volunteer services that help the city grow and prosper. Uh, I also want to thank volunteers, the election judges, the boards and commission members who provide recommendations to the city council on countless projects. Uh, we cannot provide all the services we do uh, without their help. And the city is looking forward to a great 2019. We will continue to focus on our priorities that David went over uh, and bring our residents the best service possible. So thank you for putting your trust in me and the city council uh, to lead Farmington into a promising future. That's the end. Thank you all for coming.